A question came in in last week's Q&A around the idea of if I've made it to this point within the watch hierarchy, is it wrong that I like watches below it? This seems completely obvious to the more seasoned watch enthusiasts, but if you think about it, if you're new to watches or you've worked really hard to save up to get yourself to a certain level within the watch hierarchy, maybe you feel like you're doing yourself a disjustice if you're then interested in watches below where you've managed to get to. That's what I want to talk about today. Welcome to Bark and Jack, I am Adrian, and if you want to support the channel, just hit the subscribe button down the bottom there, and a little bell icon so you get notifications when I drop a new video. If you're into watch straps, jump over to barkandjack.shop and check out our leather and NATO straps we have over there. And we also have a little watch tool, a little compact travel watch tool, so jump over to barkandjack.shop and check those out. So last week in the Q&A, in last week's Q&A, a question got asked which I thought required a little bit more talking about or the fact that I wanted to talk about it in a bit more depth. And the question is, now that I own a Rolex, I still like pre £1,000 watches and I still see quality. Is that weird? Now, as I said at the start, that sort of question might seem just obvious to a lot of more seasoned watch collectors or, or watch enthusiasts or people who are, are deeper in the game. My short answer to that is no, it's not weird. It just proves that you are an actual watch enthusiast. If you're going down the route of buying a watch because of the value of the watch, then I'd put you in the camp of more of being a poser or someone who's into watches for the fashion side of things as opposed to being into watches for the enthusiast or an enthusiastic motivation. It is very much a different line to someone who's enthusiastic about the watch. I believe if you're a genuine enthusiast, watch enthusiast, then the value of a watch is really quite meaningless. For example, the guy who owns this £26,000 solid gold Speedmaster also owns probably enough Swatch watches for Swatch to classify him as an authorised dealer. He doesn't care about the value of a watch. The only criteria that's important to him is, do I like it? If that box can be ticked, then it's highly likely he's going to buy the watch. He is an absolute watch enthusiast. Now, there might be different motivations around why someone is enthusiastic about a watch. They might be interested in, in the movement, what makes the movement work. They might be interested in the history of that particular model of watch. They might feel an affiliation to the brand, and therefore they're, they're enthusiastic about a certain cluster of watches. But I feel... The one thing that can be ignored entirely is the value. The value of a watch isn't a feature of the watch. It doesn't provide any benefits to the end user. It just is a barrier to whether you can become an end user. The affording side of things is, is another point as well. You might actually be able to carry out that transaction, but do you want to have one expensive watch? For example, we can do extremes here. Do you want to just have one expensive watch or do you want to have 15 cheaper watches. What's going to bring you more happiness? I get that question asked so much on uh, on Instagram. I own XYZ. Should I sell all of this and buy one watch? Well, I don't know. You have to figure that out yourself. You have to figure out whether one watch will bring you as much happiness, as much joy as having multiple watches. Again, the value of this packet over here compared to value of this thing over here, that doesn't really matter. It's down to what is going to make you more happy. Another point is the value of your collection or the value of a watch. I feel there is no correlation between the value of that and the level of enthusiast. Just because you can afford XYZ doesn't mean you're more of a watch enthusiast than someone who can't afford XYZ. If you put watch enthusiasts together, I'm sure their percentage of income spent on watches is higher than the normal person's percentage of income spent on watches. So I guess there is a correlation there, but that doesn't come down to one overall value of watch, it's a percentage, so it's just all relative. The hierarchy of watches is all very debatable. You might feel a, a, a certain connection with a watch brand and therefore put it on a pedestal and therefore see it as more valuable than XYZ. Equally, you might see another watch brand as being um, a good watch brand, but not worth the money that they're charging. Therefore, you might put it down a peg or two. So all hierarchies, I feel, are very, very debatable. That Everyone talks about the Holy Trinity being Patek, Vacheron, and Audemars Piguet. Again, that is still debatable. I, I guess it's so solid within the community that they will be the Holy Trinity. But if you ask a watch enthusiast or, or a watch collector, they will probably all have their own individual holy trinity 
just like everyone has their own Grail watch. My most recent watch review, watch chat, was on the Bell & Ross BR05, and my kind of ending comment was, if you remove the price of this watch, I actually think it's quite a fair watch. The price of the watch means that people dislike it because it has an off-the-shelf movement at £4,000, it makes it very, very expensive. I think if this watch was £2,000, £1,900, I think it'd be a completely different story, and I think a lot of people would be behind it. But because of the value of the watch, people are put off it. And that was a purpose behind my, the point that I I mean, the final point that I made was if you remove the value, if you remove that £4,000 figure and just look at the watch as its individual entity, I actually think it's not that bad. And no, that video was not an advert for Bell & Ross, nor is this video an advert for Bell & Ross. Just making a point. So the way I see it is if you can see beyond value, if you can see beyond hierarchy and you just like watches, you are just a watch enthusiast. No doubt there will be brands at the bottom of the hierarchy that as you go up the ladder and you start to experience different things, you can then look down and have a more educated kind of assessment of what is going on in lower brands. The way that I see it is if you're a watch enthusiast, you just like watches. Guys, drop me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button as well if you want to join the channel. And the little bell icon to get notifications when I drop a new video. If you want to check out our watch straps, jump over to barkandjack.shop. If you want to check out previous videos, jump over to barkandjack.com. If you want to check us out on Instagram, give us a follow at barkandjack and follow our group at We Are Hortics. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.